The new approval of Onavide really shifts our thinking in patients with metastatic disease. It gives us legitimate data-based second and subsequent lines of therapy uh, that says we have improved outcomes, improved benefits. So what this enables is really a legitimate lines of therapy discussion with patients. You don't have to give everything in a full Firinox regimen right from the beginning. You can pace yourself. Remember, it's not curative therapy. And so while we do want to get responses, we do want control of the disease, we also want quality of life, we want good performance status, and you know, allowing patients to go on and live their lives as they're being treated. And so this opens up that opportunity. The approval of nanoliposomal or reno tcan was really a, a, a big step forward because we, uh, up until that point, we didn't have an FDA-approved drug for use in a second line or after the failure of gemcitabine-based chemotherapy. After the drug was approved, we at Memorial were very interested in understanding the experience in terms of real life settings. So we conducted a study and presented some of that research at the GI Symposium here in San Francisco. Um, and hopefully we'll publish um, our results um, for the wider public downstream. The bottom line is at our institution, patients that are treated by myself and my colleagues our experience is very similar to what was seen in the Napoli 1 study um, with reasonable uh, progression-free survival and overall survival in patients receiving na nanoliposomal renew TCAN. Toxicities were all very well um, within the limits of what we were expecting to see. Um, we also uh, treated a lot of patients with lower doses and with dose reductions and found that that did not seem to negatively impact the outcomes for our patients. Um, the bottom line that we saw also that were encouraging was that patients who received nanoliposomal or reno-TCAN in earlier lines of therapy seemed to benefit more. And probably the most encouraging thing that we found was that sequencing treatments, so starting with treatments like gemcitabine and napaclitaxel, followed by nanoliposomal or reno-TCAN, Patients actually lived for a very long time with their advanced pancreatic cancer, um, probably as long as we've seen in, in any other uh, studies that have been published. So it's, uh, our experience has been very encouraging, and we hope to share uh, more details about um, that experience in a publication soon. When we think about who should get the new therapies, first you have to be in second line, right? So you have to have seen typically gem-based therapy in the front line. Um, and if you, typically also 5-FU naive, so you've never seen a 5-FU-based regimen. And that's like the sweet spot patient, right? So still decent performance status, doing okay, uh, able to tolerate chemotherapy because this is the infusion pump, this is drugs with some side effects, we can't get away from that. Um, but you want a decent performance status patient. Normal liver function or pretty normal liver function is important with these kind of drugs. Um, probably somebody who's good help at home. I worry about patients who don't have a strong caregiver or partner to support. Not necessarily because they're so sick, but just the whole pump thing and everything else can be a little complicated. So nice to have an extra set of ears and an extra set of hands around. So if you have all of those pieces in place, which is a lot of patients with pancreas cancer, then I think that is the ideal patient for this second line therapy.